the easiest part to start with is actually a wheel. And in my case, I'm going to start with the back wheel. As you can see, I have positioned my 3D cursor roughly at the axis center point of my back wheel. And I'm going to start with creating a circle. So I press Shift A, create a circle. And I'm probably only going to need a circle of maybe eight vertices. Keep in mind again, what we're building here is more for visual reference. So I just only need to create a geometry that maybe roughly looks like an acceptable tire. So this is not really rocket science. Then I can press tab, go into edit mode, and for example, scale everything down. And in edit mode also, I'm going to move my points up. It's very important, it's actually imperative that you do not in object mode move your object because then I'm going to move my object center point. The object center point has to stay at the center of my wheel, so at the axis. So I'm going back to edit mode and along the x-axis, for example, I'm going to rotate my geometry so that the ring cross-section is kind of like parallel to the wheel. And I'm going to scale it down a little bit more so it roughly fits the proportion of my wheel. To create now the surface, Blender has a similar tool to Alias for the Revolve, but in Blender it is called Screw. So I'm going to the Modifier tab, click Add Modifier and select Screw. And the Screw command is working this way. So we have our object center point. That is basically the center of the X, Y and Z axis. And inside the modifier, you see that I can pick an axis. For example, currently the Z axis is selected, which is why we get this weird ball, because the circle is revolved around the Z axis. But we look along the X axis and you see Z is up and Y is left right. So for example, if I pick Y, you see nothing really works. And if I pick X, then there you see now the wheel. We can, for example, set the amount of steps. If you want to, you could also change the amount of rotation in degrees. But of course, we want 360 degrees for a complete rotation. And you can see that there are some artifacts on the surface. Kind of like this shading is not really correct. That can easily be fixed by selecting calculate order. So by turning it on, it's all fine. You might maybe ask yourself what screw and iteration stands for. This revolve tool at the same time can also be used not only to create a circular pattern kind of like what you see here or a wine bottle, but also to create springs or threadings. So if I, for example, change this value, you can see that I can create a spring and then iteration adds more coils to it. But of course, in our situation, we don't want any screw, it should just be a ring. The nice part about this is I can now, for example, move my ring in relationship to the object center up and down, and you see that automatically updates then the revolve tool. I could also maybe press S and X and squeeze my ring together, and that then, for example, creates a thinner wheel or a wider wheel based on what I'm selecting here. So let's compare this maybe with the wheel of our imported mesh and it looks very similar. Okay, good. A 
let's say I would like to also generate the, the rim for it. I could maybe if I want to select those two points, press Shift D, so they are duplicated. And then maybe I move them up a little bit and so with S, 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 scale them apart a little bit. And then E and S and X and extract those two points out from each other. And again, this, for example, physically is not necessarily correct. All we're doing here is creating surfaces that maybe at one point then we can import and bring into alias to touch them up, for example, uh, creating fillets or blends. And I'm going to sculpt this a little bit more. And to close this, I just need to select those last two points, press F to fill, it creates an edge, and then this way finishes the surface. And from a distance, this for example looks like the rubber part of our wheel, the tire, including the metal part, the rim, and you specifically get this feeling about this construction because we built in the extension for the rim and the small intersection. From here maybe we could put in 64 steps so that everything looks a little bit sharper but from here you can still see it's very jaggy. And we don't really have a control over that unfortunately so instead of going with a really high value like 64 I'm actually rather after this add another subdivision surface modifier. So maybe let's see if one is okay, maybe two. Yeah, two is pretty good. That's nice and soft. So this looks actually really good. And maybe those points here, we could scale in a little bit more this edge the surface I would like to crease a little bit more so I could maybe select those two edges and then go to my mesh tools and go to subdivide and subdivide will create more points on those lines and thus for example start sharpening the edge a little bit and because this is a symmetrical object and I'm not going to use the mirror tool, I just have to always select the left and the right point accordingly. So that when I move them or scale them, I have to scale them all together at the same time. And the nice part is, this is really an easy way to sculpt some things if, if I want I like a different shape for my surface. This should be very sharp or wider. You could add another point by pressing W, you get the mesh menu. So this is very much works the same way like in Alias, where you just have a profile curve that you work on, and then the construction history, and here it is the modifier, then generates for you the missing geometry interactively. And that's, for example, all that is to know to build a wire and then quickly play through different variations, for example, the rim.